Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and Charlie here from Daily Motor and today we have the brand spanking new 2020 Mazda CX-30. This is Mazda's newer subcompact model. It slots right above the CX-3 but below the CX-5. So Mazda's kind of starting a new naming scheme, throwing in this CX-30. You'd think a CX-4 would kind of make a little more sense because you got three yeah. and then the five, four going in between, but CX-30, you know, I guess that's what they wanted to go with. But it looks awesome here in this snowflake white pearl. Got a little bit of this cladding here, plastic cladding. So we're going to take it out on a test drive. We're going to walk around the vehicle, check out uh, mm -hmm. the goods and the bads, and talk about uh, whether it's, it's worth all its hype here in 2020. When this thing showed up in the driveway, I was excited. Me too. Yeah, it's definitely cute. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of it's like it's sort of looking tough, but also... I don't know, it sort of manages to look like mighty but small. It wouldn't necessarily be the best car for someone with a big family or, right. you know, it might even be tough for like a rear-facing car seat for someone who's maybe younger couple, younger single person, someone that likes to kind of live an active lifestyle, maybe if you right. live on a lot of different roads. Um, I can even see an older couple using this and not using the back seats a lot, maybe. We've been taking it around a lot of sort of different driving aspects. We've been taking it on dirt roads, city streets, kind of curvy situations. It's been getting really good fuel economy here with its little two and a half liter engine. And it has all wheel drive. Yeah, that's true. How about we grab the camera and we'll do a little walk around and take it out for a drive. That sounds good to me. All right, so like we said, this is Mazda's technically subcompact car, although it's it's a little it's like I said it's bigger than the CX-30 but it's still not huge but I think it looks really good it's got Mazda's new design language got this beautiful white paint like we were talking about this uh what was it snowflake pearl snowflake mm -hmm. pearl yep these wheels look good and then you got this black plastic cladding which is going to be really good fighting against rust um, any rocks that you may hit in the road any potholes or whatever if you lived on a dirt road or something like that. Yeah. Yep. And actually, we've been taking it on some dirt roads today, quite a few. And honestly, it's still not dirty at all if you yeah. look at this. Yeah, you wouldn't really think it. I was expecting more like dirt kind of to be up here. And it's, it is there. You can see now that I run my finger on it. But it actually does a really good job at kind of masking that dirt. And you can see on the back window here, that's quite a bit of dust and dirt right there. But against this white you really cannot see it. Now, if you're driving against dirt roads, day in and day out, it might accumulate, but just for today, mm -hmm. we've gone probably a couple of miles down mm -hmm. probably three or four different dirt roads. And at, at a good speed. At a good speed, yeah. Probably averaging 35 or so. At least, yeah. What do you think about the styling on the rear? You think it looks good? Honestly, for me, the styling, on the back isn't anything to be upset about, but it's also not anything to be crazy about. Okay. It's got this interesting slope back here that kind of cu that cuts back down. It does sort of eliminate a little bit of practicality, you'd think. Like if it came out a little more square, then you'd have a little bit more storage space inside. But that's a good point. People like yeah. those kind of coopy, sporty looking crossovers these days. So mm -hmm. I guess Mazda's giving it to them. Yeah. For me personally, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> One thing that's kind of strange is that the parking brake seems to always come on whenever I've started this car. So we'll start it up here now. The parking brake is set. And then I go and put it in drive. And the parking brake is still set. So it's like, if I press the gas... Hmm. Why? <laughs> Not only that, but it beeps a ton of times, even when you just have the door closed. We were noticing that. It's it's honestly kind of obnoxious. Yeah. It's yelling at you because you don't have your seatbelt on. But I've just gotten in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if I just get in the car and get in and start it, let's count all the beeps. One. Eight beeps. Wow. Seems like five too many. <laughs> Eight too many. <laughs> 
Anyway, so you have a button here, pop open the power lift gate. Now I for one don't think a power lift gate is really necessary with a car this small. I don't know, I'd have to check the build configurator to see if, you, if the lower models come without one. But um, we were talking about the, the size in here and it's pretty decent for the, for the size of the vehicle, it's pretty low. I think if you were loading something like groceries or something like that, you don't even have to lift them up super high. Um, we have a spare tire, and actually the Bose sound system, that's either an amplifier or a subwoofer. It's probably the amplifier sitting in there. Might be a little hard to tell with the sunlight, but you got some tools and jacks and everything. And then you have some plastic hooks. They're not metal, but they are there. And it doesn't look like any sort of grocery bag holder, so that's a little disappointing. Some of your competitors, you'd get some, some hooks either in the seat or on the side. And that keeps things from sloshing around so much. There's no net, there's no pockets, so it's kind of what you see is what you get. All right, let's hop in the back seat. Okay, so it looks like the driver's seat is set for Charlie's height. And I am in here quite snugly. Um, there's not a whole lot of space that's happening right here. I do have maybe like an inch and a half to two um, before my knee hits this. The seat does go in a little bit on the back, which is useful. It does that on the passenger seat too. Um, there is a lot of actual foot space down here. So if I had bigger winter boots on or rain boots on, um, I could probably be comfortable with that and not feel too cramped back here, but it's not a whole lot. There, it's, there's not a lot of wiggle room. It's and you're, and you're really about given. like four foot three, right? Really? Five, two, five, one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So even at four, five, three, though. <laughs> even at four, or even at five, one, you're not dealing with a ton of space. No. Yeah. It's, it's not given a whole lot of extra space for me here. How about so. headroom? Headroom, I'm fine. And actually, if you do want to come in here, or I could take this, um, the roof oh, is flat here and then it curves up. I hope you guys can see this. Um, for people that might be taller, because I'm guessing Mazda does know that it's cramped back here. All right, now Charlie's hopping in to see how he fits in the back seat with the driver's seat um, fit to his height. Yeah, it's uh, it's honestly not terrible. Um, <laughs> it's I, not I, what you want to really hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, given the class of the vehicle, I mean, I see what you mean about the seats. They kind of have that, that cut in. So there is enough room for my legs, although my knees are hitting the seat. It's soft, so it's not like they're hitting like a like a hard plastic or anything. And they did, like you said, they made this cutout in the, in the ceiling. So even at 5'10", I've got a few inches of clearance there. What actually is the least comfortable part about the seat is it's sort of like reclined upward. I'm sitting very upright. Hmm. Uh, I noticed that too, actually. Seem... Let me see. Nope, it doesn't go back any further. That's all you got. So I probably wouldn't want to be back here for much more than like a 45 minutes hour, yeah. I'd say. Um, I could probably do a good two to five pushing seven hours back there. <laughs> if you're really thinking about taking this on a lot of road trips and you've got people that are closer to my height, which is not 4'3", sure. <laughs> <laughs> then I could, I could, I could do well. Sure. So if you've got children or, or short teenagers. Right. Yeah. No, it's clear that the back seat of the CX-30 is, is kind of more of an afterthought. The, the main focus is the front two seats. I mean, there's no lights that you can turn on back here. There's, there's no power points. Um, you're kind of just, it, it's here in case you need to bring people. You do have the center armrest, which is nice and squishy, and you got some cup holders and some bottle holders in the door, and, and I mean, the materials are great, and it's comfortable, but you, you, you're supposed to be in the front. <laughs> but let's check out the folding seats. Well, we got 60-40 rear split fold here, and hmm. <laughs> so you definitely have to move this seat forward a little bit. There we go. All right. So you do have to move the seats forward to fold the seats, the rear seats, and then... It is not flush. No, it's not a perfectly flat load floor, but it's really not too bad. Let's go to the 
in the back again here. You gotta wait a while for this to open. So not a perfectly flat load floor, but if you removed this, you'd have a fair amount of space. Hatchback-esque space. This is pretty much just a lifted hatchback. It's not really a crossover. So the front seat is the place to be in the CX-30. Yeah, it has power seats here, and I'll show you very quickly how those work. We have front and up here. This is for the back portion of the chair, and we have lumbar. But if you have a couple of different people that are going to be driving this car routinely, and you don't want to always reset your seating adjustments, we have up to two seating adjustments right there. Mine is set for two, and just like that, which is pretty cool, it's set. And not only does it set the seat, but you also get the mirrors set. However, you do still have to adjust your steering column. Yes, which goes, that's not automatic yet. Right. But you do have telescoping there as well as up and down. And then your, uh, your rear view mirror, which I haven't seen a single car yet that can adjust that one for you. So Maybe 2030. Maybe 2030. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to note that um, when you do press it, let me pre actually, let's go back to the first one and listen it'll beep at you which is a nice little chime when it's done there it is the car does make some nice beeps i've noticed it's yeah like... except the eight beeps at the beginning you're right the, the, <laughs> but the sound of the beeps is, is very it's not nearly as harsh as a lot of other cars the blinkers nice and smooth the um <laughs> what did you you, well, you compared it to something Yes, oh, Nintendo Wii's. Oh yeah, it does. It sounds like a little little Wii. Little Mazda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah makes <laughs> sense. So, but look at this interior, man. It's just gorgeous. It's super beautiful. It's got this nice brown leather that feels really quality. It's squishy up here. It's also kind of um, it's like grippy. grippy. Yeah. So if you are in the habit of putting sunglasses up here, which, which you, you shouldn't. shouldn't be, but maybe when the car stopped. Yes, fine. And it's parked. Um, I don't think that they'd really slide around a whole lot. It's very grippy. Yep. All right, should we go for a drive? I think so. Okay. Okay, so we do have the push to start. And again, it's angry at me because I don't have my seatbelt on. Immediately. Immediately. So if you're gonna own this car, before you even turn it on, put your seatbelt on, because it won't do that and I'll show you. So we have it here, off. I've got my seatbelt still on. No beats. Very quiet. Yep. Hmm. It does show you back here, if you do have chillins back there, that um, all three rear seats are not wearing their seatbelts. Hmm. But fortunately it doesn't beep at you for those. That would be so many beeps. <laughs> all right. Big old standard style shifter here. Just mm -hmm. park, reverse, neutral, drive, and a manual shift mode that you can either do from the center console or with silly little paddle shifters back there. Mm -hmm. But they do work. It's fine. It's a mm -hmm. standard six-speed automatic transmission, so... No big surprises. Backup camera is a little bit small. I was a little disappointed to see that. Overall, I like the infotainment screen, but... Also, with other cars that we've seen, when you're turning the wheel, it does not show you like little lines of where your wheels would go if you yep. were to back up that way. Yep. So, not a big deal. I mean, you can obviously tell when you're turning your wheel, I should hope. <laughs> so, the steering itself is quite stiff, I would say. But, um... It's not too heavy. It's not heavy. No, yeah. you're right. It's like, it's a, it's a satisfying sort of linear smoothness. And, but yeah, it's like, it's, it's well weighted. Right. Gives you kind of a confidence. Also, the steering wheel is a little bit flat on the outside, which I thought was kind of cool. You notice that? It's like not perfectly yeah, round. Yeah, I do notice that. It sort of feels good in the hands. Yeah. Nice leather. One thing I do appreciate is that the climate controls have their whole separate section here. They're not built in at all to the infotainment screen. <laughs> so you've got AC, fan controls, dual zone climate, different air direction buttons. It all works nicely, works well. I will say it is kind of hard to see which buttons are which right here, but once you learn them once, then you're good to go. Now, is the head-up display on for you right now? It is, yes. See, that's strange because I've turned it off twice now and huh. it seems to come back on every time you start the vehicle. And that's frustrating to me mm. because I don't care for this head-up display. I've noticed that when we were driving earlier, um, 
it was dimmed down quite a bit. It's a simple in, uh, head up display. I have found that this one is really quite distracting because it is a good couple inches above the hood for me. And that part is adjustable. Oh, so you can okay. you can you can adjust where That's it sits. Good to know. But I've also noticed that it, it's sort of like it's hard to focus on it. Okay, well is that adjustment is that something that also resets every time you turn I the car? I sure hope not. I guess we can find out. Yeah. So to do that, we can feature the rotator knob to control the infotainment screen. This, confirm, yes, is not a touch screen. So you're not gonna get any fingerprints up there. And this is actually a very well dialed in, easy to use, and good feeling rotator knob. There was another car, it was the Genesis G90 that we had recently, that the rotator knob worked well, but it felt so flimsy and sounded cheap. It was like a little play school toy. Hmm. This, for a $30,000 car, actually feels really, really good. It's not quite as premium as maybe the BMWs, but it's much better than Genesis. Right. So, use this, we can go home, and then head down to settings. You're gonna have a tough time seeing this in the sunlight, so. In-vehicle displays, active hmm. driving display, so I'm going to drop your height a bit here. Huh. Tell me when it's good. More, a lot more. Try to go as low. Ooh, now it's out, so go up just a little bit. There? That's good. Okay. It's really easy to maintain a very specific speed in this car. Um, I've noticed that earlier. So the weight to the, the gas pedal is good. The weight to the brake pedal is really heavy. That being said, I've also noticed that when I am coming closer or when I am driving at higher speeds down these country roads, um, I am needing to brake really, really hard here and trying to make it as smooth of a braking experience as possible can be tough. Maybe I'm just not used to the weight of the, the brake pedal yet. Accelerating is fun, but it's not going to be exhilarating in this car. So I feel like safety is its number one feature here. It does have lane assist it, that does not beep at you. Instead, um, it jerks the steering wheel, but it doesn't seem to have a jerking um, motion with the car itself. Yeah, the engine, even though it's not nearly the most powerful in its class, it always sounds, it never really sounds uh, angry or out of place. I mean, you can get into it and it's happy to rev up, but it's certainly not a power rocket. No. So the navigation screen works well, but it does look a little bit dated compared to a lot of its contemporaries. Although, it's, and you're probably not going to be able to tell, but the water has like a surprising amount of detail. We noticed earlier, <laughs> it's like little wave animations, but yet the rest of the screen is pretty basic looking. But it zooms in really quick, quick adjustments, you can move things around. We haven't actually used the voice guidance at all yet, so how about we try that? Okay, how do I do that? So on the left side of the steering wheel, you'll see there's a button, you press that. It's got command. Navigate to Buffalo Wild Wings in Ann Arbor. <laughs> there were multiple results found. Say the desired line number. One. Look at that. Brought it right up. That's pretty cool. Very minimal, sort of like, did you mean to say blah, 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 blah? Two miles, turn left. It's a decent voice. So we've got it on some twistier, hillier roads here, and Alyssa's kind of experiencing the zoom zoom that makes Mazdas famous. <laughs> so let's put it up into sport mode here, which just kind of makes the throttle a little bit more lively. Oh, I notice it. Okay. Okay. You don't have to press so hard on the gas pedal for it to really get going in case yeah. you don't know what the sport mode is supposed to act like. Yeah, a lot of people think sport modes like add more power or anything. It doesn't. It just makes the power come on sooner. So yep. it feels sportier. And a lot of people just care about how a car feels. They don't care about the actual numbers. So in terms of interior space, there's not a whole ton in this car compared to some of the others in this class. You've got two cup holders, a little bit of phone storage here, although it's not... Not very wide. It's kind of it's a narrow. Weird, and it's a weird angle. It's yeah. like the phone's not sitting flush. So that's kind of weird. Also, there's no wireless charging in this car. So that's something you're seeing in a lot of new vehicles that yes. the Mazda is missing out on. Especially However, vehicles in the same class, too. And here, it's it's actually a pretty decent size 
center console. So you've got, we see we've got some stuff in there now. It goes pretty deep. It's got a little bit of padding on the very bottom, but other than that, some hard plastics. So you are gonna hear some things rattle around. Inside, you've got a USB port and a 12 volt outlet. You got two more, or sorry, one more USB port up there. So just two in the car. A little bit limited compared to some of the techier subcompact crossovers. And this slides forward to here. Whoop. There is where you typically have it because then you still have access to the phone and you can just lift it up hmm. like that. But if you really wanted a little extra elbow, elbow support, you can go up to there. You do have to press. Oh, you can't lift it up from here either. You have right. to press the little latch here, push it back, it back, all the way. It in. Either way, it can be in either the middle or the all the way back. Okay. Yep. yep. So, you know, not not a bunch in here, but it's there. Hmm. But I do really like the brown brown leather. It feels nice. Everything you touch is super soft. Not only is there like an initial softness here. It pushes in. It's quite squishy. Yeah. Yeah. Where no your, hard elbows here. No, where your elbows go here, very squishy. All the materials just feel really nice. I mean, they really compare do. this to like the Nissan Kicks or anything else in its class. And the leather's nicer, the stitching's nice, the door handles, very premium. All the buttons that you press. Listen, just listen to that very like solid click. <laughs> Every material, every button switch. Now these feel a little bit on the cheaper side, but they still, that's like a, a metal-y plastic. Like it's like, even yeah. if it is plastic, kind of gives that it feels. It's just good, it's nice. And this is the top level premium pla package, but I know that even in the lower packages, you'd still get a good, it might not have all the interior trimmings, but it would still be nice. Mazda's doing a really good job all the way across the board with their cars. All right, do I get a chance behind the wheel? What are you doing? Taking my spot. No. <laughs> you know, there's almost like an orange. You notice this? There's like an orange yeah. within the seat. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It looks great, man. These floor mats are good from Mazda. Okay. My turn. <laughs> I did not want to give it up. It is a fun car to drive. I do enjoy it. Yeah, I'll say this one is definitely a lot more fun than both the kicks and the venue and just everything I've driven in this class. Mazda always does a great job with that. So, so. <laughs> You're dealing with a, a naturally aspirated two and a half liter motor and it just has a little bit more character than those really small turbocharged engines that a lot of the manufacturers are switching to. Try out the manual shifting a little bit here. best thing about Mazda is you know that they're always going to provide a good driving experience regardless of what sort of vehicle. I mean this thing's an all-wheel drive crossover technically and I mean that what it's it's definitely low on power to be able to really have fun doing that but you get the wheels to squeal and 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 the main point is is not necessarily the fun factor but it's the confidence and sort of the way the vehicle communicates to you. I mean the steering's not super twitchy but at the same time, it's like Alyssa said, it's well weighted. Mm -hmm. The brake pedal's progressive. The throttle, it's not super snappy. It's not jolting you off the line. But if you floor it, I mean, it's there. So. I will say, through all those fast twists and turns there, I was flying around in this seat. 
<laughs> yeah, it doesn't exactly hug you the way a, a sportier car would, but I think that's a testament to the CX-30's hustling abilities. <laughs> oh, I had the AC on. It was sapping me of power. Oh, jeez. I don't think it was. <laughs> main thing is just that the Mazda, it's a really nice drive in a lot of situations. I mean, we're not going to get out on, on highway drive in this video, but we drove the highway earlier. It's surprisingly quiet. It's very quiet. Pump. It's wonderful. You compare it to that, uh, that Mazda, that, or that Nissan that we had, uh, the Kicks. Mm -hmm. It's much quieter That one was that. really loud. That it one was, yeah. was pretty shaky on the highway, I thought. Mm -hmm. This seems pretty steady. Very stable. Really easy to drive. Yep. Yeah. You can tell that Mazdas are really designed and engineered by people who are thinking, okay, what do I want from behind the seat here? What's the best move? What's What can we do to make this car more comfortable and more desirable from behind the wheel? Not just throwing a bunch of stats at it and saying, oh, people like this, people want this, but genuinely thinking, what do I want? What do I, as a driver, appreciate? So at the end of the day, would you, would you buy one of these? I think I would. Yeah. Although I would definitely have to consider the limited space here in the back seat, yep. and is that going to be a difficulty in the next five or ten years? Mm -hmm. You know, families grow, right? And, and you get a lot of different hobbies and things like that. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of where it comes down to for me as well. Is this the CX-5, which is a little bigger than this, actually significantly bigger? I'll say also drives really great, is also very nice inside, and just provides that extra space. You can get rear-facing car seats, you can get more in the back. So I really like what Mazda is doing here, but this class is a little bit limited. And I've got to say, the new Mazda 3 hatchback, and or sedan, you can also get in all-wheel drive. So it's pretty much just this car, a little tiny bit less space, but also lower to the ground, and a little more sporty to drive. So. I'm glad this car exists, and if you like lived on a dirt road, mm -hmm. did a lot of maybe like camping, but just like one or two people camping, then I definitely consider it. Highly recommend it, especially if you want a car that looks great both inside and out, feels great, has maybe lacking a few features, but if they don't matter to you, if you don't have a phone with wireless charging and you kind of care a little bit less about the tech and more about the driving experience, CX30 is awesome. It's really good. Let's hop out and take one last look, eh? Sounds good. Like I said, small but mighty. It's it's cute. I, for one, mm -hmm. am of the fat of the camp that would much prefer Mazda's Soul Crystal Red. <laughs> Beautiful color that you can get on Mazda's. But I will admit that this white is a really nice white. It's a good tone, very sparkly and pretty. I just think it looks kind of weird contrasted with this black cladding. But Alyssa disagrees. The white is so crisp. It's mm -hmm. clean. It sparkles when you get up to it. I really love that snowflake white pearl. And I will admit, it stayed clean, even though if you threw all this sort of driving we've done, and, and I, like we said earlier, I expected it to be more of a mess. <laughs> but seeing it here on the sand, it kind of looks a little, you know, let's look at the ground clearance it's got. You got a lot of travel on the suspension. You can get over some big bumps. If it were snowy, you could get through a lot of snow. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks everyone for watching. If you want to see more on the CX-30, we're actually going to be doing a sound system demo as well, so the link to that will be in the description. We've also got a few other reviews on some of its competitors, as well as a lot, as a lot of other vehicles. So we've got the Nissan Kicks that Alyssa did, we've got the Hyundai Venue that I did. We've got more coming, so definitely hit that subscribe button if you're interested in keeping up to date on all the new vehicles. I'm Charlie. I'm Alyssa. And we'll see you on the next one. Drive on.